when building out applications, it's always useful to be able to give the user flexibility in editing and deleting records. However, on very rare occasions do I like to give users the ability to physically hard delete a record. This particular icon here is actually a delete. If I click on it, I'll get a little warning pop up to say, are you sure you wish to delete? If I say yes, that's it. The record's gone, been removed from the table, and there is no undo. Now, as a developer, time and time again, I've had this situation where customers contacted me and said that a record's disappeared and uh, it's obviously been deleted, but no one deleted it. So what this video will run through is how to create an archive or soft delete process. So in the builder, I have a table which attracts the clips that each pet has. And one of the fields at the end is a field I've called archived, which is a multi-choice field. And the only options are yes and no. Its default is no. So every record it's added, it automatically sets the default to no. The other options on here are kind of irrelevant because the user won't get to interact, but I like to set it as a radio button and make it required. But obviously as it's a default is no, uh, requires kind of irrelevant. So what that ends up looking like in the table is you end up with a column at the end where every record is set to no. And we're just going to toggle this from no to yes to be able to effectively hide the records. So I'm going to go into pages and come to that table. I'm just going to remove this physical delete option and I'm going to go to actions and trigger an action. And when the person clicks on this link that currently says action, we will change no to yes. So there's a few things I need to change on here. So instead of the header saying trigger an action, I'm just going to say archive and the link text I'm going to remove. I don't need any link text. So that word action will now disappear and I'll use an icon here instead. So I'm going to add an action and the action is to update this record and make archived. Yes. I'm going to show a confirmation message, which just says archived. And I just like to use the, um, the header three setting. And that is the little banner that pops up in the top right hand corner. Once I've clicked on the action link, I set the column to 50 and center and then add a rule. So there's two rules here. Um, one is if archived is no, which is its default state, um, I need to display an icon. And I like to use the history icon, um, which is kind of an archivey one. And uh, just choose a dark blue. I don't tend to get too particular about the uh, value or the hex code. And then the opposite to this, if um, just by copying that rule here, um, I'm going to change it. So if archived is yes, um, I want to hide that. So I can save that. And I'm just going to click and move that over here. So the other thing I need to do is uh, add another column and add an, an action to be able to restore this. So trigger uh, another action and I'm going to name this one restore. And once again, no link text. I'm going to add an action, which is the opposite. So it's going to make archived no. And I'm just going to say restored. Highlight all that text, make it a heading three, custom and center, and then add a couple of rules. So the rule here, if archive is yes, I want to display an icon. And the icon I'm going to use is the undo icon. And once again, just going to go for a kind of generic dark blue and then copy that rule and say if archived is no, which is its general normal state, I'm just going to hide that. So that gives me two action links to click on. I'm just going to move restore next archive. Now there's a couple of other things I like to do to save this. Um, first of all, to set this particular table so that the settings uh, are that we hide uh, empty columns and at any one point in time, either archived or restored will have a, an empty value. So it will be hidden. I also like to, on the edit column, uh, put a rule that states if archived is yes to hide the edit button and do the same on view, which kind of forces the user to restore the item before they edit or uh, play around with the record. So if archived is yes, then hide that value as well. So the last thing to do now is just on this table is to put a, a filter. So if I go into settings, 
I can use a, a custom filter and uh, sorry, a, a filter menu rather. And I'm going to say that if archived is um, no, that's an active record. And I'm going to copy that and say if archived is yes, that's an archived record. And what that's doing is it's putting these two little filter buttons here above the table. The first filter button is going to be the default view. So it's going to show all of those where archived is set to no. And when it's been archived, you can click this button and go into the archive section. So I'm just going to save, um, save that rule. So back into the builder and just done a refresh. So you can now see the archive link. And this particular record has a two month frequency. So if I archive that, the actual link will fire. I'll get a little pop up in the top right hand corner saying it's archived and then it's moved. So now this record is a the one beneath, which is a three month and it's moved to the archive section. So if we click on the archive filter, it's now sitting in here and my restore link is visible. My edit and view are hidden based on those rules. So if I want to bring this back, I can do the restore. But each time I visit this page, so if I come back into this particular page, it will only show the default active view. So that all the archive ones are effectively filtered out. So if I go into archived, I can then click on restore to bring that one back. So I've got the little pop-up banner here, the archive section there has no data, and I can go back to active. The other variant on that theme is instead of giving the user the ability to um, archive, you can give them effectively a soft delete so the user thinks it's been removed. So if I just go into settings and I'm going to remove the user filter menu and just say don't allow, which removes those filter options. And I'm going to um, remove the restore action link. And the archive one, I'm just going to rename to um, delete. Uh, in fact, I'm going to call it trash because that kind of indicates it's not actually really been deleted. So the rule is still the same. It changes the archived to yes. And I'm just going to put in here trashed. Um, and these rules are still apply that if archived is no, which is its active default state, um, I'm just going to change that icon from a history one to a trash basket. Um, you can use that. And if it's yes, hide the value. So if I save that rule, go back to the live app. Um, once again, this item here has a two month frequency. If I click on trash, get my pop up that says trashed and that's been filtered out. And because I don't have the option to be able to get in to see those archived ones to the end user effectively, it's been deleted, but the record is still there in the builder and can be restored. So if I came into the builder, go into the table of clips, I can see this record here has a two month duration and this one has been archived. So if you wanted to control this as a builder, I could then come into here. If the client contacts me and says it's been deleted in error, I can restore that to no, it's not archived. And then if I come back to the live app, um, that will then reinstate. So that two month one is, uh, is now back. Uh, I hope you found that of use, uh, just gives you a way of being able to, um, actively, uh, archive and restore and uh, soft delete uh, your records. Mm -hmm.